Hello, and welcome to Cry Havoc Wargaming, dedicated to bringing you the uncommon. For those of you who haven't met me, my name is Ron, and today we're going to do a gameplay video and after action report of Song of Drums and Tomahawks by Ganesha Games. So let's get started. Songs of Drums and Tomahawks is a game designed by Ganesha Games to play French and Indian War, or frankly, any of the Indian Wars uh, that take place between 1611 and uh, the First Powhatan War all the way through to the Seminole Wars. But it's primarily set in the French and Indian War period. And what we're going to do right now is present a sample of how this game plays set in King Philip's War between Pilgrims and, and the Wampanoag. Let us go ahead and see this game in action. Let's go to the gaming table. So here's our table for today's game. We're playing an ambush scenario. The pilgrims, who are in the woods over on that side of the table, are ambushing a body of Wapanoag traveling through the woods here. Song of Drums and Tomahawks is created to cover a wide span of time, uh, anywhere from 1611 and the first Anglo-Powhatan Wars all the way up until I think it goes um, to the Black Hawk Wars or Seminole Wars or something. So a very wide time span of Indian warfare. This is an ambush. The attackers are the pilgrims. We're beginning with them in, in the woods over on the far side there. I have the Indians here in Indian file ready to use their group move. Um, we're gonna roll for initiative. The uh, red will be the Indians and the gray will be the Puritans. The Indians have initiative. The way this game works, this is an I go, you go game, sort of. What this initiative means is that the Indians have the first turn, but they have to roll to actually be able to activate. You can roll up to three dice, except that I'm doing Indian file movement, which is a little bit different. Normally what would happen is you'd roll up to three dice, trying to beat your quality score of the person that you're trying to activate. These are D6, and anytime you roll over your quality, then that group has that many activations for how many successes you have. The obvious question becomes, why don't you just roll 3d6 every time? But here's the thing is, anytime you get two or more failures, your turn ends. So that's the gamble of this game. You, you could just roll 1d6, possibility of activating every single figure, uh, but then they're limited in what they can do. For instance, reloading the firearms and everybody out here, I think, except for one, is carrying a firearm. Rerolling for firearms has to be done in two activations in the same turn. So to reload a weapon, you've got to use at least two and get two successes. What happens if you fail? Let's say you get one success and two failures. If you get, if you get three failures, then it just goes the other side. But if you get two failures and one success, you still get to finish that one success. You get, get to do that activation and then the turn is over and goes to the opponent. So the Indians do have a group movement possibility it is Indian file. Indian file is described as being in a single file line or a column, one behind the other. They have to have their leader with them. He's here. And they can't be more than a short distance apart from each other, which they are not. You roll 3d6 uh, automatically, but you're only going to count the two highest. The stats of this game consist of your quality, which is what you're trying to beat on this roll. Uh, beyond that, there's traits, and that's what makes these characters different, are the traits that they have, and that's how you design them and show a little more individuality and alteration from one group to another. So, let's see, the Warlord is going to be the highest, probably, so his quality is three. Fours is average for quality. So I need to roll four or higher, I get a plus one to the die roll because they're all within the leader, and I only have to count the two highest. I have a four and a two. Like I said, in a normal die roll, that would have been two failures. I'd get to do one activation and then go. When you're doing these group commands, you roll 3d6, but only count two, the two highest. In most cases, 
And it's the case with these guys. When you're in the open and not in cover, or not in terrain, or don't have certain traits that limit it, then your movement is going to be a medium. Uh, everything, range-wise, movement-wise, is done with a series of three sticks. I have a set of fancy Litgo acrylic sticks for the game, but I, I've seen people actually just use rulers. They give the measurement of them in the game. Measuring is done by placing the stick in front of the figure you're moving and moving him directly to the end. So it is one movement stick plus measuring base of movement, actually. And because I made this roll, and this is a group move, they all get to go. This is one of those games where you cannot curve. You don't have to move the full distance of a movement stick, but if you wanted to turn, it would take more than one movement. All movements have to be done in the straight direction of the stick. But that's everybody activated. You can only attempt to activate each of your figures once in a turn. So that is all the Indians activated. So the turn goes to the Pilgrims. To determine how many dice you're rolling for their activation. There's no requirement to state what you're going to do up front. What you are required to do is determine who you're going to activate and then roll for their activations. I don't want anyone to activate. The only guy I have with line of sight is my commander who's armed with a pistol and I'm pretty sure that that's got to be out of pistol range. Well, let's just check that. Yeah, a pistol is a short stick. It can go out to three sticks, but each stick is only a short, so it's not, not very long. Set my guys up poorly. If that was one of my muskets, I'd be fine. So I'm not going to do anything this turn. Unfortunately, I can't like reserve any of that. There's no rule for holding an action or anything like that. So we're just going to go ahead and waste our first turn and go to the Indian second activation. Mm -hmm. There's no rule for spotting in this game. Pilgrims are not hidden. They will have the benefit of cover, but because they're on the edge of the tree line, they can be fired at. So I'm going to assume they can be seen. If they couldn't be fired at though, they also wouldn't have been able to fire back. So they had to be on the edge of the woods. So what I'm going to do is start actually activating in the more normal fashion. I'm not going to keep doing the Indian file move, but I'm going to start looking at beginning the fight. The first one, he's got a quality of three. Uh, he will get a plus to his roll because he's got the, the leader within long, well over long. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to attempt to activate with two. I've got a four and a two. Now his choices are most of the obvious sort of things. Uh, a shoot is a one activation, takes one activation to do, but if you wanted to do an aim shot, that would take two activations. So like any other game, you might have taken an action to aim and then an action to shoot. They just sort of combine them into the two. Going in the train might not be a bad idea. One short move to get into cover. So this is the first shot of the game. He's going to have to fire at the pilgrim on the end there, I think. I think I took him sort of out of the, uh, the range of shot. Shooting modifiers. I kind of hinted at part of this already. This is going to now use the combat dice. And with combat dice, you're going to add your die roll to the combat. But we both roll. This is a musket. It's going to use a long stick. We, okay, we were in within the second range. So that means there's a, a plus, uh, plus one. Targets in light cover, that's going to remove that plus one. But the red die is going to be for the Indian. The Indian's combat is just two. The Indian's got a plus two to his roll. The European also has a plus two. So we roll. That's eight to six. So the Indian wins with the eight. Shooting results beaten with an even number. That's going to be what's actually on the die. So, I mean, in this case, it's eight anyway, but if that had been a plus one, it had been a seven, you'd still go with the even number for the die showing the six. Uh, but it's eight. Beaten with an even number on the winner's die, the opponent is knocked down. It takes doubling on that roll to wound. Being knocked down, this isn't force prone. This has been knocked down. He's actually been hit. Uh, if he is hit again while he's still knocked down, he will be considered wounded and out of action in the game. Now we're going to try to activate the next Indian. This Indian's quality is four right next to his leader, so he's going to have a three again. I'm going to try to activate him, what the heck, with three dice. I got all three successes. I'm going to go ahead and 
move him onto that hill. I'm giving him that short because of the little cliff there. I'm going to go ahead and shoot at that officer, but he had two more activations to go, so he's actually going to do an aim shot. The aim shot gives a an addition, but it gives it as a negative one to the opponent's roll. So this Indian now, his combat is two, so he has a plus two to his roll. But it is in the third band. Uh, that gives no modifier for that, so he's at a plus two. The target's in light cover, uh, so that brings it to a plus one. Plus one to the roll. Uh, the opponent, on the other hand, has a combat of three, uh, but because he has been aimed at, there's a negative one, so that's going to drop to two. So we have a plus one to the red die and a plus two to the gray. Six to four. Good thing that we had that extra plus there. That came really close to being a, a dead leader. He's fired. He gets off his aim shot. He hits with a, an even number. So that is another knocked down. All right, the leader himself is going to try to activate. Why not activate for three, hey? It's going so well for everybody else, and his quality has got to be better. Yeah, his quality is already three. I don't think he gets the modifier for leadership, though. I'm going to try to activate him for three. He gets two. So what do we want to do with those two? That'll be his first move. That is his second move. Uh, we're going to activate Indian number four. His uh, quality is four. I'm going to only try to activate him with two because now he's out of long from his leader. He only gets one success. I'm going to use it to move into these woods, I think. The last one's going to attempt, again, to only move two. And he gets one success and one failure. I'll go ahead and bring him over here. All right, those are all my Indians gone. Let's go ahead and see what we'll do now with our pilgrims. I'm going to try to activate this fellow here. This is number three. His uh, quality is four. He's got his leader right there next to him. I'm going to go ahead and give him the plus one for that. So he needs threes or higher. I'm going to try to activate him three times. Uh, that wasn't necessary. I made all three anyway, though. So I'm going to go ahead and shoot the fellow on the hill first. Uh, I'm going to do an aim shot. Zero modifier for the aim shot. Number three is my settler. That's not great. Well, he's only a combat two, so he's got a plus two. The distance with that musket is going to make it, uh, there's no modifier for that. It's just the plus two, but the opponent, that's an Indian warrior. He's just a plus two. Seven on the gray and two on the red. So this is over double. Um, that Indian is gone. That man, he's shot. Uh, he has one other activation he could use. Not a lot he can do. I'm going to move him into cover so that he can safely load. I'm going to try to activate the gray on the ground. That is my frontiersman. He's a quality four. I'm going to try to activate him for three. Uh, I get all three. So his first activation is going to be to stand. Takes an activation to stand if you're knocked down. He is stand. That's his first action. His second action is going to be to... I'm going to shoot the one that's in the woods. That's moving around the side of the woods. His combat, he's a frontiersman. His combat is two. He is marksman. I'm going to have to check that. This is within three. So being within three gives him a, a zero modifier. Oh, I'm sorry. He has a rifle. He probably shouldn't. I'm not sure that's right in Phillips' war. But I gave him a rifle, so that's a plus one. So that's going to bring him to a three. Plus one combat roll for shooting only. Normally, he's going to be two. Marksmanship makes it three. The rifle at this mange makes it four. Not in cover. Four. The target is an Indian warrior. He is two, uh, and he's being aimed at. He's got a plus one. So was it plus four to the to the gray and plus one to the red? That's a ten to a six. Uh, not double. 
it is an even number. So he is knocked down. Pretty good rolling on both sides there, I would argue. I'm going to try to activate this fellow. He's just a settler. He's, uh, he's got a rifle. He has a rifle? How do these guys all have rifles? There should be muskets. I'm going to call those muskets from now on. That's a problem of, of having grabbed French and Indian stats for King Philip's War. He's four is his air activation level. I think he's within long. He is. That's going to be three or higher. I'm going to go ahead and roll for three. And all right. Just barely got two. I'm going to try to move him. He's going to move one. He's got to do short because he was in that rough area for his first one. But his second one, he can move longer. So I'm going to move him in the cover over there. And that's, that's him done. And the last fellow there, that's going to be uh, a settler as well. Uh, he's going to activate. I might as well try three. It's my last guy, right? So I'm going to try to roll for three. And I got all three of them. Go ahead and move him. That's just two shorts anyway, so we'll move him into the cover there. That is the end of the second turn, and the pilgrims have moved up a bit. One of them had been knocked down, stood back up. They've knocked down one of the Indians. And it's now the Indian action. The Indians actually lost a, a, a person. Uh, that's a bit of an, a, a challenge. They've also lost a number of targets. I'm going to go ahead and roll for this fellow in the woods here. His quality is four. I'm only going to try to roll for two. I got, oh, I only got one of them. Well, that's a problem. Uh, I'm going to fall back out of shooting range so I can reload. I'm going to try to activate the guy on the ground. His quality is a four. I'm going to try to roll for two. Uh, he got one success, so he can stand up, but that's all he can do. That's not particularly great. I'm going to go ahead and roll for the, the Indian archer. He is a quality four. I'll go ahead and roll two for him. He gets both of his activations, so we can move him. A bow is a medium stick, but can go out to three. So I'm going to move him to the edge of the trees. And then we're going to fire. It's in the second, second band with a bow, so it's going to be a negative one. His skill is two, so that's going to bring it to a one. Uh, targets in cover, that's going to be a zero. So he's got a zero. The opponent's got, uh, the opponent is a settler, so he's got a two. So plus one to the red, plus two to the gray. That's eight. To five, the settler actually wins. Uh, so the Indian gets nothing. I think the only Indian I haven't activated now is the, the war leader. Uh, he activates on a three. I might want to get him closer. I'm going to do that. I'm going to try to activate him on three. I got two of them. I got two sixes, by the way. Sixes are always successes. Pull him back to there. That's enough to get him back into everybody. So that's his move done. So we go to the pilgrims. I'm going to try to reload my uh, frontiersman first. He's got a four, quality of four. He's right next to his leader. So that would be three. I'm going to go ahead and try to roll for three. Ooh, I got one. Because he's unloaded, that means he can't really do much. I'm going to follow him back. That's a turn, change of turn. That's going to hurt. So he falls back, and it goes back to the Indians. I'm going to go ahead and try to activate my archer. I'm going to try to activate him with three now, because he does have the leader next to him. So, oh, no, I don't want to act. Well, it doesn't matter. I got all three. He can't shoot three times. I forgot that. I have three activations I can use. I don't have to reload his weapon but he can only f attack once. The only weapons you can attack, as far as I know in the entire game, at least in the non-modern rules, uh, that you can attack twice with is the tomahawk. And that's when you're using it in combination as a ranged weapon and then in a melee weapon. You, you can either throw it and then run in and I guess grab it and hit the guy again, or you can hit the guy and then throw it. 
if, he's, if you're not still engaged. But I'm going to go ahead and shoot. This was two. Uh, so it's a negative one. That's going to bring him down to one. They're in cover. It's going to bring him to zero. The opponent has two. So it's zero on the red plus two on the gray. Uh, that's a five, two, and eight. So the pilgrim wins. But I still have two more activations. I'm going to start flanking is what I'm going to do. He's in cover, so he has to roll, do a short to move first. But now that he's out of cover, he could do a medium to move to there. I'm going to try to reload the fellow next to him. I'm going to go ahead and try this for three. Three dice, all of which, because I'm in range of the leader, have to be threes or higher. Uh, I only get one. That's not enough to do anything. And we lose our turn. So it goes back to the, the pilgrims. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and try to reload the frontiersman. I'm going to try it with three because you need two to reload a gun. Uh, he needs threes. This time he gets it. So he reloads the gun. Uh, but then I'm going to go ahead and shoot again. No, I can't shoot again because I fell back. So he'll just, for the last one, move back up. I'm going to try to re reload that fellow in the woods. I'm going to go ahead and do that with three. He doesn't make it. Uh, I only get one success. I'm going to go ahead and move him back. Because I need two successes in a turn to reload. And now it goes back to the Indians. I'm going to try to roll... For two, my bowman running around over here, he needs fours, he gets one. I'm gonna try to roll for the guy in the open here, I'm gonna roll two, he needs threes. He gets them both. I'm gonna move one. And then two. I'm going to roll three for the, the guy in the woods there. He gets all three, so he reloads and then moves back into shooting range. And the last I have is the commander. I'm going to go ahead and try to roll three for him because it's why not? Why would you always roll three on your last turn? I get two successes. So I'm going to move him to where he can shoot. And then I'm going to try to shoot war leader to Brit officer. Uh, he has a musket. Figure doesn't, but the, this is one band or less. So that's a plus two. His combat is three already, so that's five. The target is in cover, so that's four. Two, three. Four on the red, three on the gray. So nine to five. So this is an odd number. It's the first time we've had this happen. This is not double, but it is an odd number. So on an odd number hit, you move up to one short towards cover or if already cover, go prone. So he has gone prone is what that means. He's prone. The warlord is shot. And that's the end of their turn. So it goes to the Puritans. Well, now I can start shooting back. So we're going to start doing that. I'm going to shoot first with the frontiersman at the leader. The frontiersman, well, first again, I have to roll for activations. His quality is four. He's right next to his leader. Uh, I'm going to go ahead. I'm just going to roll two. We've got two fours. That's two successes. So I can do an aim shot, which I'm going to do. The frontiersman's a marksman, so his quality is two. Marksman makes it three. Cover makes it two again. That makes it four. The Indian gets a, a minus one, so he's two. So plus two to the red, four to the gray. We have seven to six. That's the same thing. He's down. He's prone. The settler just here. I'm going to go ahead and activate for three dice. Uh, I got two fails. I got a five and a one and a two. I can't do anything with that five. Well, I could move back, but that seems pointless. This was, That might have been a too risky move. I don't think I should have done that. Uh, and we go to the Indian activations. 
Good. First, I'm going to try to activate the Indian way over here, my archer, who's moving around on the outside there. He's way off on his own. He's quality four. So I'm just going to try to activate with two. And I failed both of them. That's the first time that's happened. I got two ones. In fact, that's about as big a failure as you can get. No activation at all from the Indian. So now we can go back to trying to finish what we were trying to do earlier. I'm going to try to activate this fellow here for three dice. And this time I got three successes. That's going to allow him to load. And it's going to give him a shot again if I want to take it. And I think I do. All I really have a target on for him is the leader in the woods who's on the ground. The Indian I'm referring to is the Indian leader there in the woods who is actually prone. Uh, it doesn't look like it in the image, but he's actually prone. So that's going to make this a bad shot. So the settler's quality is two. It's in the second band. That's going to give it a plus one. So that's at three, but he's in cover. That makes it two, and he is prone. So this is only a plus one, a plus one to the gray die, whereas the war leader gets a plus three. So plus one to the gray, plus three to the red. So that's a six to a seven. Uh, that is still a hit. See if I can't save my pilgrim here in the woods uh, by trying to get a shot off at the guy that's coming around him at the corner there. Direction doesn't matter in this game. You just saw me turn him. That was mostly for looks. I'm going to go ahead and just roll two dice for this. And he's going to be at threes because he's within long of the leader. I get one success with a six and a two. I'm going to go ahead and just use a shoot. Uh, he's in band two. Uh, that's a settler. That's going to give him, he's quality four. I'm sorry, combat two. Uh, being in band two makes that three. I'm going to go ahead and give him the advantage of light cover. So that's going to drop it back down to two. So that's going to be a two on the gray die to a two, well, it's two on either die, plus two. So I have a six and a six. It's tied. I'm going to call that nothing because I think it is. All I have left is my pilgrim leader in the woods there on the right. He is prone. Let's go ahead and roll three d6 first of all, because that's how this works. Uh, I only get one action. No, I'm sorry, that's two actions. He gets two actions, so he could stand and shoot. I guess I could do a combat from the ground, couldn't I? Let's try that. Pistols are only short, though. So one, two, he's in three. So if I do this, let's see. What I'm attempting to do here is shoot from... The Pilgrim Commander to the Indian Commander. Pilgrim Commander is quality three, negative one, so he's at two because of the distance with that pistol. That's all target prone, so that'll bring it to one. So he's got a plus one on the gray die to a plus three on the red. So that's a seven to an eight. The Indian actually wins by one. He doesn't need a shoot marker. And now it goes to the Indians. I'm going to try to activate this Indian here. I'm going to be a little more careful this time and only do two dice. And I think that's still a failure. Yes, it is. A failure on both dice. So the Indians have lost their turn again. The Indians have suddenly lost their initiative. I'm going to try to activate him for three. Because we're unloaded, I'm going to have to try to do a bunch of threes. So he needs threes because he's within long of his boss. And he's got him. Three successes. So he actually could load and shoot. Uh, and that's what I'm going to do. He loads his gun and shoots. Uh, the Indian is at range band two. So for a musket, that's going to be a negative, or I'm sorry, plus one. So we're at two. That makes it three. The cover puts it back to two. So it's going to be a plus two on the gray and a plus two on the red. So it's seven to five. The Indian actually wins. I'm going to try to reload the captain first. For three dice, I'm going to try this because it's hard to get the loads. I'm going to reroll that one. All right, that's two successes, so he can get rid of that. That's his two actions. I'm going to try to do the same thing with the guy to his right. Three dice. Uh, two successes, so he reloads. The guy on his left, I'm going to try three successes, and this time we lose. So he only gets four, it's not enough to do anything, 
and the activation goes to the Indians. Still, it was almost everybody had activated that turn, so that was that was a pretty good pilgrim turn. I'm gonna go ahead first and return to our Indian buddy here who keeps failing. I'm gonna try to roll two dice. This time he gets one success. He doesn't need two successes because all he's gonna do is shoot at that. The weapons are all listed by range, being long, medium, or short. But what that means, that's the stick type you use. But the range chart actually will show you times one, times two, or times three. So in this case, it's three. So for a bow, that's why I'm using the medium stick. A bow is medium stick, but that's three medium sticks, so it's a negative two. His basic score is uh, two, so that makes it zero. But he's firing an opponent who's white out in the open this time. So that's just going to be zero. The opponent is, uh, that's a zero plus to his, to his die roll, uh, whereas the opponent's going to get a plus two. So it is three, two, five. The uh, Pilgrim wins that. All right, so nothing there. The bows don't have to reload, though, so we don't have to reroll that one. I'm going to head to roll for this Indian hiding here in the woods who's reloaded. Uh, he is reloaded, so I don't have to risk as much with him. Uh, he's also within long of his leader, so I'm only going to roll two dice for him. He needs threes. He's got one success. He's going to shoot at at the same pilgrim that the archer just fired at because he's closer range. He is in cover, but he's a closer range. That's in the second band with a musket, so that's going to add a one. Indian's combat is two, so that's at three now. The cover will bring it to two, so plus two to the red die and plus two, so it's two either way. I'm going to reroll that one. Uh, that's four to six, so again, the pilgrims win that. Now we got some decisions to make. I'm going to try to activate this warrior first. I'm going to activate him for two. I got both successes. He's only moving at mediums because he's in the rough terrain, broken ground. But he's only going to move one up to here. And then he's going to here, he's going to shoot from behind this tree here at the closest target. That's less than a long. His combat is two. It is less than a long, so that's plus two. That's four. Opponent's in cover, so that makes it three. So it's three to the red die, and he's shooting at a frontiersman. So that's going to be two to the gray. Three to the red. So, ooh, eight. This is a kill. Three. Eight to three. Over double. That is what they call wounded in the game. But that means he's gone. And I have to roll for the Indian because most of the Indians have scalpers. This one is clearly an example of that. So he has to roll a die and he has to beat his quality. Uh, he does. Uh, he could still take the scalp if he wants, but now it's an option. If he had failed that roll, it would not have been an option and he would have had to have gone all of his movement and take the scalp, which at present would probably be dangerous. The last Indian I have to go is going to be the Indian leader in the woods there. I'm going to go ahead and try to activate him for all three. Uh, he needs threes. Uh, he gets two. Uh, I bet they don't let them load prone. I'm going to have to stand him, I think, and consider them unloaded still. Now it goes to the pilgrims. What do you want to do here? I'm going to try to activate the pilgrim leader, and I'm going to try to activate him for threes. No, it's too risky. I'm going to try to activate him with twos. He needs threes. He's got one. I'm going to use that to activate the shoot. He's a three. He's only shooting a pistol. That's rough. They're in three. It's a negative one. So that's going to bring him to two. And he's in cover, so that's one. So it's going to be a plus one to the gray die and a plus three to the other. So it's five to five. That's a miss. That's the way this has been going. I'll go ahead and try to activate the settler who's standing there. I'm going to try three dice on him. That's this settler here. I'm going to try to activate him with three dice. And I got two, which is what he needed to reload. So he's reloaded. The last one is also going to, that's the guy in the tree there. He's going to activate for three. And he's got all three. So he can reload and shoot, which is exactly what he's going to do. Um, Two band range with a musket. That's going to be a plus one. So he's at two, three, two because of the cover. 
So it's going to be two and two again. And we got, we rolled a five and a five, so it's going to be tied. That tied doesn't matter. So it goes back to the Indians. I'm going to try to activate the unloaded Indian here in the woods for three. Uh, I only got two. So I'm going to reload. I'm going to try to activate the Indian here for two. I got both of them. He's going to move. And shoot. He's shooting a bow at two. That's a negative one. So that takes him to a one. One to two. So we have a four and an eight. So no good. No hits there. The Indian in the woods here. He's going to try to reload. It's three dice. He got all of them. So he could completely reload and fire again. That's what he's going to do. He's going to shoot at this. That's a band two. So he's going to be at two normally. He's got plus one so that's three in cover though makes it two so he's got a plus two to a plus two so it's plus twos either way it's a four to a seven i think he's got to move i'm okay with that he'll move short over to here pilgrims are moving around in the woods now we're going to go try to activate the indians i've got to activate the leader i got to get him back up so i'm going to go ahead and roll three for him i got two so he can get up and he can i'm going to fall back I'm going to try to activate this fellow that's way up there. He's going to try to activate with two. He gets both of them. He's going to fire an aimed shot at the guy in the open. That wasn't originally my plan, but I think it's the right one. So he is at two. The fellow is opened, makes it four because of the range. Four to the red in two to the gray. So that's 10 to five. That's double. That's a pilgrim gone. I need to leave him out there actually, because we have to roll that quality check again. Uh, he doesn't have to scalp. I'm going to go ahead and try to reload the fellow there. That's going to be three dice. He gets two of them so he can reload. And the Indian in the woods, I only have one Indian left. I might as well use all three dice. Uh, I only get one. I'm going to go ahead and move him to where he can start shooting. Next turn. And now it is the Pilgrim's turn. I'm going to try to reload or shoot that Pilgrim. I'm going to activate that Pilgrim with two. He gets one. He's going to use that one. To shoot. That makes it four for the range, his quality and his range. Uh, cover is going to drop that to three. Uh, the opponent gets two. So two, two to three. That's five to five. Oh, we keep getting those, man. Keep getting ties. I'm going to go ahead and try to roll three activations for the leader. Uh, I only get two activations. I'm going to reload them. And that is the English who are in a bad way done. Indians. I'm going to try to activate the Indians in the wood there. I'm going to try to activate him for three. Whoops, that was only two. Uh, he reloads. Going to try to activate the Indian in the woods there for two. He gets one of them. I'm going to go ahead and shoot. He's at a medium. He's in twos, so bow at two mediums. So you'd be two normally, that brings it to one. Cover brings it to zero. So it's gonna be a zero for the red and a plus two for the gray. So it's five to five again. No, four to five, doesn't matter. It's a failure either way. Uh, Indian does not hit him. The Indian over here can shoot at the officer. Or did I just roll? I can't remember. I'm gonna roll to activate him. He, he gets a one. I'm gonna start bringing him up. Lastly is the commanding officer of the Indians. I'm going to roll for him for three activations. He gets two of them. He's reloaded. Now it's the pilgrims. I'm going to roll for three for the boss. The boss gets all three. The boss is going to come out of here for short. 
he's going to close for short and we're going to have our first melee. This is our first melee of the game. The Brit is a combat three with a primitive weapon and against a, uh, an Indian warrior who is quality two, three to two. Those, those are exactly equal. Uh, and I rolled one, I'm sorry, it's not that, it's not equal. Uh, it's three to two. So I've rolled six to four. He wins, beaten with an odd number. He has recoil one base depth. He pushes the Indian back an inch. That's not necessarily good. Let's roll d3 for the other pilgrim. He gets two successes. He can reload. Now, when I lost this other guy, I only had four, uh, four pure, uh, pilgrims. So when this other guy died, I should have had to have rolled a um, morale roll. I kind of messed that up. So we're going to do that now. This is going to be for the leader first. Uh, not good. The leader gets one success. Uh, one success on a morale roll means he flees two moves. So he's actually going to pull back. Into the woods. That last attack probably wouldn't even have happened. And the other one gets two fails, so it's the same thing. So they're pulling way back. It is now the Indians activation. We'll roll first for the guy in the woods that just got attacked. I'll go ahead and roll two for him. He only gets one success. He's going to use it to start coming out of the woods. I'm going to go ahead and roll two successes for him. He gets one success. Two activations for the bowman. He gets none. Fails both of those, so it goes to the pilgrims. So I'm going to try to roll two. For the regular pilgrim, he gets one success. Uh, he can start inching forward. And I'm going to roll three for my leader. He gets all three. One. And then an aim shot right up the face of that Indian. Pistol, uh, it is within one, so that's a plus one, so he's at four. I think that's it. So it's four to two, three to ten. So he's clobbered that Indian. Bam! Now the Indians have to make a morale roll. We're going to roll first for the Indian in the opening there. He gets uh, all three successes. Now we're going to roll for the Indians in the woods over there. He's over long. He gets uh, one, he's got to fall back to. The leader Indian falls back one. And it's the Indian's turn. What's happened is the Indian over here has fallen back for two moves out of the woods. This Indian here is standing his ground. The leader has fallen back. So the Indians are a little bit resistant, uh, but there's, not, there's only two, two Puritans even left anymore. And it is the Indian's turn. Now everybody is too far from their leader. So I'm gonna go ahead, first let's put that tree back. I'm gonna go ahead and try to activate this guy here for two first. Two successes, he's gonna shoot a name shot. This is gonna hurt. Uh, that's an aim shot with a musket, plus two, four, uh, into cover, three, three, plus three, plus two. So eight and nine. Puritan wins that. Puritan managed to hold off on that fight, uh, resisting the Indian shooting at him there. But that's a close, close, close fight there. Let's try to bring the Indian archer back up. I'm going to activate for two. He doesn't make either, and he loses the turn, the end of the turn. The fight for this wood is definitely getting bloody and dangerous. I'm going to try to activate the Pilgrim Musketeer for two, uh, and I lose the turn. He fails both of his rolls, so it goes back to the Indians. I'm going to try to load this Indian here. I'm going to try to roll three activations. 
he gets one. He cannot load with one. He can't do much of anything with one. He could do a tomahawk. I'm going to go ahead and do a tomahawk attack. First time I've done that. It's no mod. So it's two. It's going to drop to one because of the cover. Uh, so it's one on the red, three on the, uh, on the gray. Nine to five. Doesn't do any good. Turn goes over to the pilgrims. I'm going to try to activate the pilgrim in the woods again. This one here, he's going to try to activate for two. He gets it this time, two sixes, two automatic successes. The first one he's going to use to move into shooting. Then he's going to shoot at that Indian there. He's got a two. The range makes it four. This is going to be plus four to the gray and two, so it's five and six. He wins by one. It is with an even number, so that's a knockdown. Now I'm going to roll for three for the commander and I get two, and I'm unloaded. We're gonna come out of the woods. We're gonna close into combat with that fallen Indian and hope that he doesn't get to hit us back. And now it's the Indian's turn. So I'm gonna try to activate that Indian first. Uh, I'm gonna try to roll two, I don't wanna lose this. So I'm gonna try to roll two. We get it, he stands. And then he's going to melee. Uh, his combat is two. He's strong, which I think is going to make it three. Is that right? Let's see what strong does. Yeah, plus one combat roll. So he gets plus three, and the other one gets plus three. So it's three to three. This is, would have been even. However, I rolled a six with the uh, primitive weapon. They're both sixes, actually. But whenever you roll a six with a primitive weapon, then that die wins the combat and the figure is automatically wounded and out of action. So the primitive weapon actually did its, its deal then, dropping that Indian, and now we have to roll for morale again. So I'm going to roll for first for the Indian archer here. Uh, he gets two successes. He's going to fall back for one. Uh, I'm going to fall him this way, I think. Not sure that's legal, but it makes sense with the cover there. And then we're going to roll. Now we're going to roll for the Indian commander. He's going to fall back for one as well. They're starting to pull back. They're not sure about this. That's a medium now. He's not in cover. I'm going to try to activate the archer with two dice. Uh, he doesn't get it, and it goes to the Puritan, uh, to the pilgrims. I'm going to try to activate the Pilgrim Musketeer in the woods with two dice. I get success, he reloads. I'm gonna activate the commander for three dice. Uh, he only gets one success. So he's gonna, yeah, I think I'm gonna call this game. We're down to two guys on the side. We could keep fighting. Uh, I just think it's too risky for the Pilgrims to get too far apart from each other. This was mostly to show you how the game worked. So I don't know that there's a point in continuing. I don't know what would happen. We could play to the last man. I think it's too dangerous for either side to really continue here. I think it might be realistic to stop here and figure you've done, done some damage and go home. So that was King Philip's War, represented by the Ganesha Games rules, Song of Drums and Tomahawks. Interesting game, I really enjoyed it. I, I should play these rules more often than I do, I think. I, I really had a, a good time playing this the game like the way it unfolded, like the roll system. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. If you've enjoyed this video, I hope you'll go ahead and hit like. And if you'd like to continue to receive notifications for videos like this one that may help you better determine how to spend your money or your time in your tabletop wargaming hobby, then I hope you'll hit subscribe and ring our notification bell. Until next time, cheers.